on video cards AMD Radeon Pro W7900 and W7800 announced. So I don't know if this was an official announcement or if this was because I wasn't I wasn't made aware of any sort of webinar announcing these. Uh, usually AMD will announce to the press or they'll announce it via a webinar after the fact. But I'm surprised that these are already in the wild. This guy. So the Radeon Pro W7800. This is the smaller one. 32 gigabytes of RAM on a 256-bit bus. DisplayPort 2.1, 70 CUs, 45 teraflops, AV1 encode, decode, 260 watt. This is most likely what the 7800 XT will end up being. Now, now, granted, it'll have half the VRAM, so 32 divided by 2, 16 gigabyte card, AV1 encode and decode. That's nothing new because the 7900 cards already have that. 45 teraflops. So the 7900 XT today is 51 teraflops. So this is this this is most likely very similar to what the consumer grade 7800 XT will be in terms of the board power, in terms of the teraflops, the CUs, the memory. So I'm expecting a 16 gigabyte card with 70 CUs and around 45 teraflops with AV1 and the board power might be like 290 watts or maybe 300 watts. They might up the power limit because it's consumer, so they'll you know they'll be able to get better uh, FPS out of it, better uh, AIB coolers, etc. They must have a better cooler than the AMD reference models. Is that well? These things don't. These things are not really meant to play games. Like this is more rendering stuff. But yeah, that's a that's the question that I haven't been able to figure out if this is going to be Navi 31 or 32. That's what I don't know. But you can tell by looking at this. This is going to be weaker than the 7900 XT. 45 teraflops versus 51. Uh, the other one, so the XTX is 61 teraflops. So it's, yeah, so it's actually, it's actually closer. So what's, what's interesting about this, if you look at the teraflop number, the 7800 looks closer to a 7900 XT than the 7900 XT does to a XTX. So what that means is that on paper, the gap between, so if we say 7900 XTX is up here, 7900 XT is like here, 7800 XT would be like right here. Meaning the gap between these two is larger than the gap between these two based off of the teraflops because this thing is 61 T teraflops. Okay, well, you guys get what I'm saying. Like 61 T, this one is 51 T, this is 45 T. See what I'm saying? There's a 10 teraflop difference between those two but there's only like a six teraflop difference between those two. Tech power up says Navi 31. That could just be a placeholder though, unless they have some kind of insider information, unless they've been briefed on that product uh, ahead of time. I think this is the best indicator of kind of a preview of what the 7800 XT will look like, at least in terms of the raw single precision floating point 32, the RAM. So basically this pretty much proves that it's going to be a 16 gigabyte card that uses anywhere from 250 to 300 watts and it has 70 CUs. So that's probably what it's going to be. And they're using the 7800 numbering. So I'm pretty sure the consumer edition of this is going to be the 7800 XT. So if we look here, so here's, so it says available Q2 2023. So what that means is that, like I said in a previous live stream, remember guys when I predicted when the 700 XT would show up? I told you guys around May. I said sometime between the start of May and like mid-June was my rough estimate. I still stand by that. And this kind of further proves that that timeline is still pretty much accurate. But again, going back to what we were saying earlier, if the stock of the existing... 6800 XT, 6900, 6950 XT, until that stuff gets to a certain threshold, AMD is not going to announce anything publicly for the consumer card until they get to that lower inventory threshold on the previous generation, just like NVIDIA. So it's, it's no different from NVIDIA. They're just going to wait it out and then they'll launch their product when they need to replace the older stock. If a workstation, if a professional XTX 
is $4,000. We can predict the price of the 7800 XTX. That is like a one to four ratio, right? It's because you have 4,000 to 1,000, then you have 2,500, $625. So it's gonna be around $600. That That's, that's really interesting because that puts it right in line with the 4070. They'd have the exact same price. But again, AMD could probably price it higher if it's like faster. So now we gotta look at tech power up to try to further figure out what the price will be on this thing. So if we look at, if we go to 4070, 4070 is here. If that card is like a 6900 XT, that's only like 3% difference roughly. Um, I know tech power ups numbers are not the be all end all numbers, but they're a rough estimate, I would say. I'm thinking it's probably gonna be anywhere from like five to 10% faster than 4070. I'm kind of thinking it might actually be more like this card in terms of its performance. What do you guys think? Do you think the 7800 XT will be equal to a 6950 XT or do you think it'll be faster or do you think it'll be slower? Because how close is this to a 79? See, so look at this, the 70 7900 XT, I'm just gonna round this up, is like 15% faster than a 6950 XT. And a 7900 XTX is about 35, 36% faster. If we take that into account, if it's about like 15%, if the 7800 XT is like a 6950 XT, that means it would be about 15% 14%, 15% slower, but it would be like 10% to 12% faster than a 4070. So they might price it at 649, $650 is what I think they're probably gonna declare the MSRP. If it's if it's 10, 10 to 15% faster than the 4070, it has 16 gigabytes of memory. I think they're probably gonna declare 649. And here's the reason why I think it'll be 649. Look at this guy. Check this out. RX 6800 XT. Launch MSRP $649. Remember, 6900 XT. Launch price $999. XTX has the exact same price. So, which means AMD didn't actually raise the price at all, unlike Nvidia.